did you feel that you had like um, an entrepreneurial edge that wasn't being utilised where you were? Hence why you wanted to dip your toe into aesthetics. Do you know what? You're completely right. And I didn't know it at the time. I'm one of those people that people tend to recognise things in me um, <laughs> before I do. And then I go, oh, yeah. Um, but my brother had mentioned to me, he was like, you work really hard. He's like, you're really, really dedicated. You're really motivated. You always want to give 100% like it's, it's you or your own relatives that you're looking after, which is, I think Ev should be in every nurse. And if not, perhaps they're in the wrong profession. Um, he's like, but if you worked for yourself, he was like, it would be amazing. He's like, and, and I sat there and I thought, you know what, I'll give it a try. But yeah, I did. I felt like I had something in me. My dad had always worked for himself. My mum had worked in, in as a nurse, but also had also had a, a hair salon in the midst of all of that years ago. Um, so yeah, I think it was something that I needed to explore and I'm, I'm so glad I did, to be honest. What were the top two or three major difficult things that you had to get your head round uh, when you took that step? What was worrying you? What were the major things that were worrying you? The first one, which I didn't think would bother me because, um, you know, people have their opinions, they're entitled to them, not everyone agrees with everything. And I'm one a big believer in if it makes someone happy, it's none of my business. Um, but I was quite conscious of the fact that when I spoke to some of my colleagues, doctors, dentists, nurses, um, they were like, aesthetics, really? They were like, well, you know, it's like, it's beauty. I was like, well, some of it is cosmetic, but obviously they are prescription medicines. And, you know, they do require, in my opinion, a medical consultation assessment for ultimate patient safety. And so that, that was one of the biggest ones. So it was what my colleagues would think. Um, and I kept it quiet for quite a while. I was doing it on the side, but I worked in a different area to where I was living. So I tried to keep it very separate because I didn't want an overlap and a conflict of interest. Do you think that there was a, a, a stigma within your current, your colleagues at the time that they would think slightly less of you because you embarked on that aesthetics career? Yeah, 100%. I did. I really did. And there was a couple of comments, um, not nasty comments, not vindictive, just like, oh, really? Like, almost like they were actually quite surprised. Like, I thought you loved your job. I was like, I do love my job, but... I want to have something that's mine. You know, I want to do something a bit different. I want to make people feel better in a different way. And I think the biggest trigger for it was when you go into the NHS, obviously people are ill. Um, and to a certain extent, education was always something I loved. I loved teaching right from when I qualified. They were like, you've got a student, but you've just qualified. Is that all right? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. You know, I don't know what I can teach them, but hopefully I can teach them something or they can teach me. Um, you know, they might teach me something. It's a win-win, isn't it? But um, it, what frustrated me was the amount of support I felt like sometimes we were giving or not able to always give and the lack of motivation from some patients, which, you know, comes with long-term conditions, mm. illness, diabetes, cardiac conditions, depression. And I, I just got to a point where I felt like I was really putting in a lot of effort with a lot of patients and they just weren't really that bothered. Mm. And I found it really frustrating because I thought if we worked together, you know, you could be in like real optimum health. You could be a really managed, like controlled diabetic. You know, we could reduce your hospital admissions. And that was part of one of my roles as practice matron. And I loved it. And I worked with an amazing team. Um, but then when I started delving into aesthetics, people had come in and they were well. And they were looking after themselves. And they wanted to improve themselves even more. And it was just really quite refreshing. They knew rather they than wanted. being quite draining. Yeah, they knew, yeah what they, they knew what they wanted. They were motivated and determined to do it. And don't get me wrong, obviously that depends on where you live, your, your upbringing, your, you know, how much money you earn, what lifestyle you have. And, and, you know, there are some overlaps, but there is quite a difference between some of your NHS patients and some of your private aesthetic patients. Um, but it was nice to be able to help people that wanted to help themselves more. Aesthetics Unlocked. Download and listen to the full podcast now at cosmetic-insurance.com or wherever you get your podcasts from.